Hi, I'm Patrick Murphy Racy. I'm a Sony artisan of imagery. I'm here today to talk to you about shooting sports action performance with the brand new yet to be released Sony a7 IV camera. What we're going to do is talk about menu settings um, and kind of getting you the best bet for being successful shooting things that move. So let's dive right in. I'm going to press menu and off we go. So here we go. Um, I'm going to stay on JPEG here. Image quality settings, these are very straightforward. Uh, I'm a JPEG shooter, so I'm going to change this to extra fine so I can get the biggest bang for my buck with a 33 megapixel file. You can use this uh, at 14 or 8.2 megabytes if you like, but most people are going to want to shoot 33 and get the big file. If you want to shoot raw, you can just do that here. Um, it's, it's no problem, you just change it here. You can shoot either raw only or raw plus JPEG, but I pretty much shoot uh, sports all the time, so I shoot JPEG only. Um, so, here we go. Aspect ratio. Uh, leave this on 3.2 because it's going to allow you to use the biggest area of the sensor. Um, but if you're shooting a magazine cover, 4.3 works great because it's exactly proportional to 8.5 by 11. If you're producing images that are going to be in a YouTube video, you want to shoot 16.9. And with the a7 IV, as well as many other Sony full-frame cameras, you can shoot uh, squares for Instagram. But like I said, most people are going to be able to mostly shoot 3.3 to 2. Um, this is kind of a big deal. Uh, I know this is mostly about stills, but I'm going to just point this out really quick. Uh, this camera has the ability to shoot 4K, of course, which everybody knows. But in movie settings, you're actually able to change this from 8-bit color to all the way to 10 bit color and you can capture 140 megabits a second um, which is a big big file now this is a huge deal i'm not going to go on a huge detail but this allows you to shoot video like pros do and there's it's so much easier to uh to uh, adjust in tone or what's called color correction or um it's just a great setting so if you shoot a lot of video you're going to want to do this most people are going to want to probably shoot on speed at 24p, but you can change that to whatever you want. But I just wanted to point that out. Um, this leaves on auto. Let's kind of keep going here. Color space. Because I'm a JPEG shooter, I want the larger color space that Adobe RGB offers versus sRGB. If you're shooting a wedding and the only result of your photography is going to be prints or inkjet prints, you want to shoot sRGB. Uh, but I, I choose a Joey. Okay, we're going to keep going. Okay, single shooting, I'm going to go to high plus because I want to shoot sports, so I want to get the full 10 frames a second. Okay, silent mode. This is, this is really, really important. Um, uh, what we're going to talk about here is this part of the video is like maybe the most important part. Because the a7 IV has a 33 megapixel uh, file size and it's full frame, it's not going to do a great job with capturing action in electronic shutter. You're going to get what's called jello roll or it just, it's bad. It will distort horribly um, like a golf swing. Um, it'll just mess up your picture. So if you want more information about this, just go to Google and put in shutter distortion, electronic shutter distortion, and I think you'll find a lot of images that will show you this. Um, but it's very important if you're going to shoot real sports, like fast moving action, whether whatever it is you're going to do, whether it's dancers leaping or whatever, you must do this in mechanical shutter to avoid the distortion that the, the electronic shutter will produce. So Let's go back and take a look at that more closely. So this is mechanical shutter versus electronic shutter. If you're going to shoot, um, if you're going to shoot weddings and stuff like that, portraits, electronic shutter is fine. But really, you're going to want to be on mechanical for anything sports, anything fast moving. So kind of really, really important. Now the good news is this camera, like the uh, cameras that preceded it, has anti flicker in it and you want to turn that on. It will only come on if it needs to come on uh, and not otherwise. So it's really handy. Uh, this is great. If you, if you st if in the high school fields where you shoot or small college, if you see a red frame and a tinted yellow frame and tinted green frame and a tinted blue frame in a sequence, this will take that away, which is really, really handy. 
I'm not going to worry about these. I'm going to kind of skip through some of these that don't really matter. Uh, live view display set. I'm going to kind of talk about this just for people that are coming into Sony from Canon or Nikon or whatever. Um, live view display um, is a, you, you really want setting effect on. So the setting effect on is the same thing as live view with Canon and Nikon. Um, so you want that on. The only time you're going to want to, to, to choose setting effect off is if you're using strobes. If you're using a flash or you're in a studio, this way the camera can see to focus much easier instead of showing you. But typically for all available light photography, you're going to want setting effect on. And this is going to give you what you see is what you get exposure in the EVF, in the viewfinder. So it's very, very important. just looking for other things that um, I may want to change. I'm just going to point this out. Um, wireless flash. Everybody uses wireless flash now. This setting should be only be turned on for a Sony proprietary trigger or flash unit. If you're using something made by Godox or I use Westcott, whatever, you really want to be have this off. If you turn this on thinking, oh yeah, I want to use wireless flash, your stuff's not going to work. So make sure you leave that off. Just going to mention this really quick. Um, the original A9 camera does not have uh, picture profiles or creative looks. And it's really nice to get this incredibly video enabled camera that does have profiles. So you can shoot um, all these different color profiles, picture profiles. Um, 10 is one of my favorites because it's an HLG mode. It's really cool. It's like shooting S log without the hassle. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. But it's it's pretty sweet okay I definitely would advise you to change your AF uh, to continuous uh, for shooting sports it'll come out of the box set to AFA you don't want that you want AFC for sure um, and uh, because there's no uh, lens in this camera it's, it's just showing manual focus that's why it's all grayed out and then autofocus tracking sensitivity, I would tell you to go to three or four, but probably three is your best bet. AF illuminator, you want to turn that off for any kind of sporting event because it's going to produce a, a, a red beam that fires out of the flash, and that's illegal for NCAA, Pro, and even high school. So you don't want to fool with that. AF with shutter, I turn this off because I use back button focus where it says AF on, right where your thumb goes. It's a much better way to shoot sports, in my opinion. You can do whatever you want. Um, focus area. What you're going to want to do here is go all the way to the bottom of these where it says tracking. And I can't do that because there's no lens on the camera, but you want tracking uh, flexible spot M for medium. That's the best setting to use, in my opinion. <clears throat> Focus area color, you want to turn this to red because it'll glow in the dark. You'll be able to see it at night or in a really dark situation. Definitely do that. Okay. Okay, face priority, face and eye AF. This is, um, again, if you're coming out of Canon and Nikon DSLRs, you haven't really experienced this yet. It's pretty amazing. You want to turn it on, definitely, and you want to set it for human, unless you're shooting animals or birds, in which case you can see what to do there. And I like to have, I like to see what it's doing, so I turn on the display for this, because I want to be able to see what it's doing. I'm just booking through these here. Okay, this is a big deal. Delete pressing twice. You can uh, double tap the back of the of the uh, delete button, and it will make the picture go away much faster than having to do a couple different keystrokes on the back of the camera. But just be careful because if you get used to this, you can delete frames. You can't get them back once you do it. So, but I love this feature. It's great. Okay, focus frame display. This is a big deal. Um, in focus frame display, what this is going to do is when you hit play and you actually look at your images on the back of the camera, 
you're actually going to be able to see uh, it'll grow, glow green where your autofocus was on each play. It's really handy. It's a really good idea to do this. Um, you won't be able to see it in post, unfortunately, but it will be there uh, in the camera when you're looking at it. And you'll kind of be able to figure out, did the camera mess up or did I mess up, honestly. And uh, typically it's going to be you, but hey. I'm just going to make this one setting here. There's a lot of custom keys you can make. You can make any part of the camera. All these buttons that are on the back of the camera can be retasked for whatever you like. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the lens one here, focus hold, and I'm going to change this to uh, something else. And what I'm going to do is put it on um, the zoom feature for um, APS-C. Uh, it's right here. APS-C full frame. So now when I press that focus hold button on any lens that I have, it's going to automatically zoom in to APS-C. So it's going to be a 1.5x zoom on the sensor. It costs me no light. It's like a free teleconverter. It's great. And because you have a 33 megapixel camera at your disposal, you have a pretty big file left over when you do this. Now there's lots of other settings you can make. I'm not going to get into that, but you can you can change these, these dials or however you like. So, um, so that's it for the, the menu settings. There's a lot of menu settings I didn't talk about, but if they're not relevant to sports or action photography, I didn't, I didn't fool with them. There's a follow-up video to this one that will explain why you do not want to use electronic shutter for shooting sports with the a7 IV. So I would, I would, it's more of a companion video to this one. So if you got something out of this one, I would encourage you to watch the next one as well. It's going to be called part two. Um, but definitely take a look at that because there's going to be some examples. At a, I went to a high school football game and shot some pictures and you can see the shutter distortion on a couple frames when I moved it to uh, away from mechanical into a silent shutter, electronic shutter. So, and remember, electronic shutter and silent shutter are the same thing. They're not different things. So um, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope you watch the next one. Thanks so much for watching. And if you like this, please subscribe.